What's going on guys and thanks again for being here. Today I have some very cool brand new release from Godox on tube lights. This is the Godox TP4R and they make in three different sizes. They also make a smaller version which is the 2R and the 8 foot long which is the TP8R. I could barely make this thing in the frame here so stay tuned, don't go nowhere, I'll be right back. And the usual disclaimer, I don't get paid to say anything. This video is not sponsored by Godox, even though I'm wearing a Godox shirt, it's because I like the brand, so I asked them to send me a few t-shirts, and all my words and opinions, they are my own. In order to keep this video as short as possible, I'm gonna actually leave a chart that Godox made because it includes luminance and brightness and everything, every setting, CCT, HSI, everything else. So feel free to pause the video here and look at everything that you need and also all the specifications for this light. I'm gonna show you guys what's inside these bags. They are okay. It's protective enough and here's the light and a bunch of accessories here which by the way this has a very thick padding right here so which doesn't scratch your light because as you can see there's some sharp objects here your light is safe so we have the power cord power adapter it also comes with this accessory this is actually 3 8 not a quarter inch which is great manual some silica gel I usually keep this inside so nothing gets humid inside just in case also come with these two cables, the different gauges for hanging with this. And lastly, some mounting hardware. This is fully coated in rubber or silicone, which means it doesn't scratch your tube light, and also some other protections right here. Same thing, doesn't scratch your light. Some locking device to prevent the lights from disconnecting, and it locks this way, and then you actually put the pin right there. Now the same thing with this case, it's just bigger, and the same contents you will find in here. So I'm gonna grab the TP2R because it is a more manageable light to show you around here. This is actually four feet long and this is two feet long. And the reason why they sent me the two lights is because they have the ability to mimic each other. So to demonstrate this, I need the two lights. The previous light that I reviewed before and this particular one here, these are definitely not cheap lights. And the first thing that you're gonna see, this whole thing is made of aluminum. It has a very nice display. And also this is actually new because every single tube light that I've seen, they only provide a quarter 20 thread. And this one is a full 3.8 because when you hold the light like this, it feels very light, which by the way, they are actually very light, even though they're made of metal. But as soon as you put something here, try to hold this light from here. It kind of hurts you a little bit because of gravity, right? So by having the 3 8 threads right here is actually a very good thing because, you know, to help a little bit with physics. When you actually hand the light this way, no problem. But as soon as you try to mount the light horizontally, this is why things get a little complicated here. So whatever it is that you're doing, I would recommend you to hold this light. So any light, any brand, something like this here, preferably vertically because gravity is going to be more in your favor and it comes included with this super heavy duty thing here so if you want to suspend the lights in the air you just screw this on this big 38 mount thread and forget about it you can use whatever you like to go to this hoop here but they include these two little steel cables this is actually overkill this gauge here but just in case you want the two gauges and there is plastic around outside so you don't scratch anything so simply slide this over here and screw it in we can also use them together for extra height. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the Godox TL series, the 30, the 60, and the 120. The clamps they actually include with those lights, they made the plastic, now they made a completely different thing here. This comes included with this light. One thing that I like about this mount is because it has rubber protection and also a clear little silicone of some sort, so you don't scratch your tube light. This is actually very nice. And to install this here, you just do this and latch it right there, done. Then make sure you actually have the safety here so this latch does not open. So you simply slide this thing on the hole and there you go. This is 100% aluminum and one thing that I recommend before you mount this here, just like I said the cam operator does to find the balance between the camera and the sled, make sure you find the center gravity here. This is not it right here, this is right here. And then you mount exactly right here. So this whole thing is loose so when you move the light this way you can pretty much do whatever you like like this here. Another thing that was nice to see is the fact that they didn't do this perfectly round here. So if you actually have this on a flat surface, somehow you want to roll or vibration or whatever that is, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to actually fall because it's gonna be stopping a little bit. So it has a little indentation right here on the edge. Usually for interviews, I use a cob chip light with a soft box and grid and all, but they also make a soft box for these tube lights here. This is the Godox TPS4A 
and it's not in stock. The uh, warehouse in China, they didn't have it in stock either, so they couldn't send this to me on time. So just so you know, they actually make a softbox for this. But I think the majority of people interested in purchasing these tube lights primarily is probably like, you know, people that do music videos and all because of the size of the lights, you know, they hang everywhere, right? But I do have an example here how these lights actually perform on people on an interview set or something like that. So I actually have the uh, light set up in the background there. So you can actually see how it looks like just with the hair light and also how it looks like with the uh, front light only using the TP4R. And also in conjunction with both lights together, it looks like this. I think it does a very good job in providing some interview sets and everything else. Most of lights that I've seen, they always include an internal lithium ion battery. I actually like the idea to have the opportunity to install two Sony batteries right here. So just in case the light dies, you can immediately replace the batteries and continue shooting. This one here and many other tube lights, you still have to wait for the charging. I have not discharged this light completely. I was from 50 some percent all the way to 100. I just went upstairs to finish a quick edit. When I came back downstairs at my house, this whole thing was already charged. I don't think it's gonna take a long time to charge because the power supply that they actually provide with this light is actually a 24 volt, which should actually contribute in charging the battery very fast. The one advantage that I see with the GVM BD45R is because they decided to make it different. Instead of having a built-in lithium-ion battery, you can actually slap two Sony NPF 970 batteries. So again, when the light dies, you immediately swap the battery and continue shooting. Another great use for these tube lights is that you can do time-lapse photography just in case you need to light a tree or something all the way down to 1%, which by the way, the 1% is actually very gentle. You can actually look this close here. So it's barely on, which is nice. I'm shooting with ISO 800 right now with the Canon R3, and it's still a little difficult to show because we have to reduce the ISO or close the aperture. So before you start anything, expose the background and these lights properly, and then you bring your other lights and start building the set. You add the other lights later. So right now the lights are set to 1%, and again, very important, in order for you to achieve the full color richness of the lights, right now they're set to 1%. Expose the background first, those lights here, and the background background way over there, they need to be a little bit stronger, dial those later, and then finally, the last step, you dial in your front lights like this here, to whatever looks good. Not too long ago, they started to include some pixel effects on this light. They're actually good for visual effects and including time-lapse photography or time exposure, which means you set the camera for like, you know, a two, four, five, ten second exposure, and then you actually use the rainbow effects and all here. So you can actually do cool things like, you know, having the model frozen at a flash. Once the flash pops in absolute darkness, you can actually do whatever you want with the light. Make sure you wear all black, including your face if you can. Wear black gloves so nothing appears on the actual photograph, right? So you can actually come here and, and do all kinds of things behind the subject and have effects like this or results like that. When you actually dim this light, this is actually stepless, especially using the app. Right now, when you press and hold the plus button here, I'm gonna go from 2,000 to 10,000 Kelvin on a whole scale. So this is gonna be going from beginning to end in pretty much less than three seconds, but I'm gonna show you how stepless this is. And when you do 100 by 100 in Kelvin, again, it's stepless. You don't see the light uh, change like, you know, so it's stepless. So on the app, you just like, you know, dial that thing really fast or slow. It should be very good for uh, live things if you need to uh, increase or decrease the brightness on a live set for some reason, this light will do that for you. Another thing that I like to see here, for example, to save battery, of course, you don't have to turn off the light or to, you know, decrease the brightness all the way to zero. There's a shortcut here by simply pressing the power button very quickly. You turn off the light and immediately turn it back on. And right now I am at 20%, 5,900 degrees Kelvin, and I'm gonna actually power it off completely. There you go, there's nothing here. Then you press and hold to power it back on. And it remembers, and this light also remembers to be paired as well. So exactly how I left it, 20%, uh, 5,900 degrees Kelvin. So right now I have the lights linked right here. They're both set to 5,600 degrees Kelvin. I'm gonna show you guys the green magenta correction so you guys can see how much green or magenta you have. So to the left is the magenta. It's just, you know, minus three, minus five, back to zero, and then minus 10, and then all the way to minus 50, then back to zero. Then just a little bit of green, plus five, back to zero, plus five, and then plus 10, and then plus 50. 
So in between, like 25 is going to look like this here, back to zero, and then minus 25. Now let's set it to 3200 degrees Kelvin, see what happens. So I'm at zero, all the way to minus 50, you have this much uh, magenta on the 3200 Kelvin, and plus 50, you have this here. So going back to zero, I'm just going to add plus five, back to zero, and then minus five towards magenta, back to zero. Now one effect that I'm going to show you guys here is the candlelight. Finally, they got it right. This is actually very close to the real thing. The most realistic candlelight effect that I have ever seen is a company called Luxly. It's a B&H brand, actually. And the candlelight on those uh, lights are insane. But this one here is pretty satisfactory in case you need something like this here. So you have all the way to one, it looks like this here, which means like no wind, right, if you will. And then the 11 looks like this here. But you see how gentle the, uh, the curves go? It's, it's not like a blinking thing, like, I don't know, before it was a disaster. Now back to 50 here, it looks like this. So you have to wait a few seconds, right? So for you to see the effect. Just a little bit more, okay, there you go. Now, if you will, with a lot of wind, for example, when it's a little windy, so the candlelight gets a little, but still very gentle, the up and downs. It's like this shape, it's not like a square thing, you know? So you know what I'm saying. So I'm actually very happy to see this because most of them, they never get the stuff right. Go back to 50% here, number 50, this is the uh, default. So I think that's pretty nice. And just one more here, you can actually set this lightning thing to manual. So nothing will happen if you do not press the play button located underneath here. So you press it once and then that's it. It will not happen again until you come here and press the play button again. And then you can actually set how many times you want it to flash. I like the four better. And I like to set it all the way to 10,000 Kelvin because this is what the uh, color of a, a lightning storm is. There you go. I think four is very realistic, but I love the fact that we can actually trigger this thing here. And that's it. When it's set to auto, it keeps going like on a loop. Now, if you want to do the same thing on the light itself, make sure you go to the settings and set it to lightning on the manual mode, and then you press the plus button, and then you only go off once. And these buttons here, they're nearly silent because they made a rubber, so here. So the noise is like minimal. You have to be like right here to listen. So it's actually silent. So you don't have any clicking noise on set if you actually wanted to use with the... Uh, the light itself here. So let's say on an interview set kind of thing here, I'm exactly one meter away from this tube light. This light is currently powered off and I'm shooting at ISO 800 with the Canon R3 with the 24 to 105 F4 lens. So right now the camera is at uh, 30 frames per second, ISO 800 and the aperture is at four. So the light at 10% looks like this here. And then 20% looks like that. And then 25% looks like this here, and 30%, and all the way to 100, you get this. Now let me change the uh, aperture right there. So right now the light is cranked up to 100%, and I dropped the ISO down to 320, and you have this result right here with the light cranked up to 100%. And then if you want to turn this back on here, there you go. That's a lot of brightness, and ISO 320. ISO 200, both lights cranked up to 100%. Now I'm shooting F1.8, ISO 100, and these lights are at 5% right here, and then 10%, 20%. It looks like this here. I'm exactly one meter away from these lights, and they're both turned on. Let me turn this off here. With this lens, things compress a little bit, so I'm this far from the light. See that? Still one meter away. 30%. 40%. And then, of course, 100%. Here's a quick overview of this light. It's not going to take long at all. This is actually when you plug in your charger. This one is for DMX. And these buttons here you have to get used to a little bit because sometimes you can actually confuse yourself here with the function or the minus or plus. 
I also want to plug in your charger. The light is going to turn on itself. All you have to do is to press the power button quickly and then it shuts off. One thing that I really like about it is because in this particular light, you actually have a little gauge here measuring the hours and minutes. So right now I'm at 0%. As you can see, when you change to uh, whatever, 60%, this is what you have left, and that changes pretty quickly as well, which is good, so you don't have to wait a long time. So as you can see, this particular set is here. I'm on AGSI right now. I have four hours and 25 minutes to go. When you do something like 16%, in a few seconds, it's gonna update the timer. Then you have 11 hours and 22 minutes. As you notice, there's a flashing green LED here. That means they're currently disconnected. All you have to do to connect both lights so they will mimic each other is very simple where it says mod here, you press and hold this button, and then you hit function, the arrow is gonna drop down to CRMX, and then you press the plus button, and then again the plus button, now you see everything is solid now, which means this light, whatever it is that you're gonna do here, this light is gonna actually copy the same exact thing. As you can see, the display also changes here. To exit this, press the mod button real quick, and there you go. So let's switch to CCT, for example. And then, whatever it is that this is doing, this is gonna update the brightness, it's gonna also update everything, call it temperature, and even the green magenta correction. But if you use the app, things are a lot quicker and a lot more efficient and simplified than these buttons right here. But just in case you want to use without the app, you can actually use these buttons. Now to disconnect the lights and use the app to control the lights separately, all you have to do is to press and hold the mod button, find the CRMX, then you have the fixture number. This one is set to 001 and this one is set to 000. I know you guys already know this app. If you didn't update the app, I suggest that you do that. So here, I'm not gonna take too long on this app. I'm not gonna go through everything because there's no need. I just wanna show you guys really quick. I promise it's not gonna take long. So to connect this light is faster than before, as you can see. So everything here is new, the buttons and everything. So let me turn them on here. They are linked right now. If you want to control this light separately, just go to the light itself and disable the link there. And here's the CCT. As you can see, the green magenta shift all the way down to magenta or all the way up to green. Color temperature from 2000 Kelvin to 10,000 degrees Kelvin. Now this is something that they actually changed, which I'm happy to see here. For example, on a GM where it says zero, tap on a box. Now you can actually customize, make sure you raise for a C that's zero. For example, I want it to be 12 and plus 12. To do negative, you raise everything. Do 15, for example, or 12, and then, then you hit the minus and then click done, minus 12. I also wish you could actually double tap on that little ball here so it goes back to zero by double tapping. This is something that I would like to see here. Instead of going here and do all this here and hit done. And here you have the HSI, which is self-explanatory, the RGB, color filter, which is the gels, XY, which you can actually set the Rec 709 according to your preference, or this, or this here. You can also customize things. And the color picker is pretty accurate. For example, I'm going to click on that background right there. And there you go. Then I'm going to click on that red right there. Or on that green screen. And you have this green. And here are the actual effects. I'm not going to show you everything here because you guys don't have the patience to look through all of them. But there are two effects here that's really worth watching what I'm doing here. This is something that they actually updated, which is great. So the lightning, for example, let's go there. You actually have the intensity, how many times it's going to flash and all, no problem, the frequency. But the good thing is you see here on the bottom it says auto and manual because when you are on a hot set, you don't want this to go off when you don't want it to go off. Simply click on the manual and then you manually click on the arrow on the bottom and then you trigger, it's going to do this once. And then you can also do 10,000 Kelvin or all the way down to 2,000. Usually lightning, I like to set it all the way to 10,000 Kelvin. But again, you hit the arrow here and you will do that once only when you want. And the same thing is available on the light itself and the buttons, they're quiet enough so nothing is heard doing a take. Now let's go to the candle light. This is actually a lot more realistic than most tube lights and most cob chip lights that I've seen. There's a brand out there called Luxly, it's a B&H brand that is the most realistic candle light that I've ever seen. And what it did here with this app is very close to what Luxly does. 
So as you can see, you can watch how the light behaves. It is truly a candle thing. I mean, not truly, but you know, very close to the real thing. And then you can actually set the speed to 100, which still looks great. You cannot change the color temperature, but I believe they were smart enough to set this all the way down to 2000, even though a candlelight is 1000 Kelvin, but it's close enough. And no other light has 1000 Kelvin that I've seen. Oh, actually one more. The police car is actually very interesting as well. You can actually choose red and blue or all these colors here. And you have the mode, for example, the mode one looks like this. Mode two looks like that. And three and four and five. And just reminding you if there's something wrong with connecting the light to the app, you can go to the light and reset the Bluetooth. Now I'm going to disconnect everything. Same thing with this. Now let's pair them again. Add fixtures. Click on both. Confirm. I'm going to expedite this here. And now we can turn them off individually. Right now they're linked. That's why when I hit the TP4R, they both turn off. To disconnect, go to the light settings on the menu and unlink the lights. And that's what I got for this review. I hope you find the contents helpful. If you want to comment anything or if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down in the comment section. I respond to everything that I see there. So once again, thank you very much for being here and I'll see you next time.